Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon as per your respective time zone. On behalf of entire Man services team, we would like to welcome you all to this 23C Workforce Management and Global Payroll Advisory Webinar session. This important session is to keep you fully synchronized with the new features and functionalities as a part of this quarter release which Oracle provides. My name is Hardik Patel, I'm an Operations Manager at Mastec Man services team. Today, I'm your host for this session, and I'm glad to introduce my colleague, Atur Agrawal, who is part of our WAST HCM UK team at Mastec. He's serving as a principal specialist in HCM team. Today, he'll take us through all the workforce management and global payroll updates for 23C quarter release. Today's session is planned for around 45 to 60 minutes, and we'll make sure um, that we also spare some time to answer any questions you may have. Um, so, before we, before we move, let's have a look at a Important disclaimer, please. We would like to convey your approach towards our club this in a very simple method. We'll be taking you through vital analysis for the 23C updates done by our experts, which will help you incorporating new features and updates easily into your system. We will also sync you on any bugs or known issues if there are any. It's good to have an interactive session, so please do ask questions through chat or question panel. We have panelist, um, senior member of HCM UK, Vidya Raju, who is available with us. So you please drop uh, any questions through chat or question panel, and she'll be happy to answer them. If we run out of time, we'll note each of the questions and connect you even at a later stage and answer each of them. Um, just to give you a glimpse on what um, how we have crafted the structure of this session. So the first thing what you see is a list of new features coming into 23C, detailing on features, so you get brief understanding on what new features are all about. Next one is what are the business benefits and important takeaway for you as decision maker. There are four components where we have done in-depth analysis of the features which we're going to present to you today. The first one is impact level analysis which demonstrate the impact on the end user. If it's a low impact, then regression testing can be avoided. If it's a high impact, we need to opt for regression testing. The second one, which is we all are aware that there are some features which are by default auto enabled by Oracle, and there are some which we need to opt for. And the third one highlights the nature of the feature. There would be certain configuration which may be required and some can be used without any changes at all. And the fourth one is, the last one is quick win. This term we use to simply convey that what is ready to use by investing minimum amount of time and what requires significant amount of time and efforts to make use of these features. So um, Atul, my colleague, will um, take you through in-depth analysis of this. So I'll be handing over to you, Atul. Um, please go ahead and meet yourself and stay is all yours. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for patient listening. Thank you, Ardik. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. So now um, let's start with all the new updates that Oracle is uh, coming up with. Let's see how those updates will impact us. Let's start with the updates. So overall, um, there are 39 updates that we are going to talk in today's uh, presentation. So we have uh, bifurcated into multiple sections like um, are these OTBI enhancements, uh, are these removed features, what are the op what are the opt-ins, and what are the default features that we can directly include, or we can directly start using it as soon as the update is coming. Let's start, uh, and as we go into the details of each one, we will take some time and we will discuss how these updates impact us. So first and foremost, we are going to talk about those quick wins where we don't have to do any configurations. As a part of Oracle new update, it will be available to everyone and we can start using it from the day one. Let's see the first update that Oracle has taken. So the first one is Payslip Performance Enhancement. So in this enhancement, what Oracle has done is, it's an internal uh, update that Oracle has done for uh, generating the Payslip. Now Oracle has improved its performance for generating of Payslip and the Payslips will be generated more quickly. It will give more time for the payroll admins and the managers to do that task. So this is just a report announcement that Oracle has done. We have done, we have highlighted it as a high impact because it will be impacting almost everyone in the organization. You don't need to enable this configuration. There is no configuration that you need to do and we have classified it as a quick way. Coming to another update. 
this is again the global payroll update so here this update is regarding costing distribution there was a huge demand from the clients that we need to offset or we need to do the cost allocation or distributing the costing as per the offset accounts now oracle has come up and they have enabled this feature where the offsets also can be bifurcated based on employee assignments so in the screenshot if you will see based on employee assignments the offset cost can also be distributed by the oracle and you can see two different lines for one element costing this is a new investment oracle has introduced and this is readily available you can use it directly coming to the third update that oracle has brought up and it's very it, and it's readily available you don't have to do any setup changes it's generate check payment task positive number validation so again it is a idea that was generated by the users so they wanted if someone has entered the check number incorrectly by incorrectly i means it's not a positive whole number if it's a alpha numeric or it's a negative um, number they wanted a error message this oracle has now delivered and now if we are generating check payments the system will only allow positive whole numbers this enhancement is also available now you can directly start using that one this enhancement will reduce the number of errors and the time that takes to generate the payslip coming to the coming to another update it's regarding data loading and it's related to uk payroll only here mass data loading to match the previous hmrc payroll id so it's initial task when we are migrating the data for the first time or we are doing the bulk upload we are migrating our employees at that time if the system is not able to find the correct hmrc payroll id when they are trying to load the data it will try to look into the previous payroll hmrc id that is migrated and if any of this match is found either the current hmrc payroll id is found or the previous hmrc payroll id is found it will try to load the data for that employee so this will enhance your data loading process some common errors will be now automatically resolved but again for your reference oracle will be giving you a log files which will tell you these many number of lines were loaded based on previous hmrc id so this will again enhance your user experience while loading the data and it will become much easier now to load the hmrc data moving forward there is uh, another update for the uk payroll team now that is p11d process parameters now in this p11d process when we are running this p11d process oracle has provided us a extra parameter which ask us for which all employees do we want to process this p11 d do we want to process only for the levers do we want to process only for the current employees or do we want to process for both levers and uh, current employees so based on this parameter you can selectively generate your p11 d process so it is again an enhancement that you can use as soon as the 20c 23c update is available to us another feature for the uk payroll team is in the fps errors and warning report this report has been enhanced by oracle this is again the idea that uh, many users wanted to have so for example earlier when we were generating the fps and the employee was not having any payroll or any payment for that month that employee was excluded from the fps results now those all employees which are excluded from these types of uh, omissions will also be reported as a warning in our warning error and warning report for fps so it will become much easier for our payroll managers to link all those employees who are reported on fps and also they will know first hand these many are the employees that are not reported to fps and that's the reason they are not having any payments therefore they are not reported in the fps so it gives much more flexibility now to the team to control the fps file another announcement uh, it has come for the uk payroll again that is regarding eft payments and the use of fast payments now oracle has allowed us to use fast payments for the uk payroll also now we can use this fast payment for multiple employees or 
if there is a single employee which is having a multiple payments those all can be included in the fast payments this arrangement is again ready to use you just need to select the parameters correctly while using your eft process if you want to use fast payments and now the fast payments are also available for you now coming to the absences part in the absences oracle has introduced the approval date in the bi publisher so when we want to create any new reports or we want to enhance our old reports there is a new parameter or a new item that is available which will tell us what is the approval date of this absence this is a very good feature because as we all know when we run the payroll only approved absences are processed in the payroll run so there are sometimes a confusion that why this absence is not processed in the payroll run so based on this report if you run if the absence is approved after a cut off date then our payroll managers knows directly that the reason for this absence not being considered in this current payroll period is that it's approved after the payroll is uh, after the payroll cut off date so this is a good feature or good enhancement that is available if you want to use in your new reports you can directly go and reuse it another part that has come up in absences and its impact on otl so earlier in the previous lease oracle has provided us future absence processing option so this option was available as a part of absence management process now the same parameter that was introduced few releases back has now been released in otl space also so now if you are using otl and you are managing your absences in the otl you can use to process the future absences in the otl time card also with this impact with this change now absence and otl are in sync with the latest updates that were provided by oracle again this is a quick way you directly have to use this feature it's out of box now available so if you have you are creating your uh, new time card attributes just directly use it and it will be available now another feature that has come up with the absence spaces irrespective of the server status if a absence approval is initiated it will be delivered to the approver earlier what used to happen is if the server was down and there is a absence that is initiated then the approval notification would stuck and we would be asking users to re-enter that absences but now based on this new enhancement automatically or every time irrespective of the server status approval notification will reach to its correct approver so now you don't need to ask your user to re-enter the absences in case of any server issues again this is not um, too meaningful for the end users but still this used to happen it was an issue now oracle has rectified that issue and now the system is much more streamlined moving forward to another absence update that is a quick win that is support for rolling backward plan tabs and multiple absences if you are using sicknesses and other multiple absences so oracle is as you know is uh, continuously improving its multiple absent and assignment solution so in this there is one step forward that oracle has taken it has enhanced its support for the rolling backward plan terms for multiple assignment cases so now if you have multiple assignment cases and you want rolling backward plans to be used especially in the sickness and all cases you can now use it seamlessly and it will all work fine moving forward there is another update in the absences um, that has come up which is related to the attachment and its visibility of the star icon so earlier uh, once we have enabled that this absence type should be having an attachment there was no star icon if you see uh, down below in the screenshot there is a add attachment and there is a star button so that star button was not available so whenever uh, users were entering it they if they forgot to add the attachment they used to get a message or a warning that you have not provided the attachment it's mandatory now since it's having a star icon that users know that this is the oracle standard if there's a star that means you have to fill this field available 
So there will be less chances that user will miss this field as an attachment. So this is again a visibility that Oracle has introduced. So based on your configuration, what you have done, this star icon will be available or not. It will automatically come on the screen. This is, uh, so you can see there are so many absence enhancement Oracle is doing, and this is again um, one code enhancement that Oracle has done. That is automatic accrual recalculation when enrollment and date is entered. So if you assume there is a end date or the enrollment, you have ended that enrollment, then earlier you have to go back and manually recalculate those absences or the accrual. But now this new feature, what Oracle has done is it has removed that extra step that was needed to be done by the HR or the payroll team. As soon as you will put an enrollment end date, system will recalculate its accrual. And if there's any changes, it will automatically calculate that and, and will update the results. So this is again a good enhancement. Again, you don't need to do anything. It will be automatically available, but it's just uh, one thing. If you were already using this feature and you were automatically recalculating or you were manually recalculating those uh, accruals, now you don't need to do it. Oracle will be handling it automatically. So this is again one less task for us to do. Moving forward, absence plan for the manager. Again, an idea, it's again based on an idea that uh, users were asking based on that this new page has been introduced under the My Team for the managers. In this page, what you will see is there is a new page that is delivered to you as a manager. So this page will tell you how many people are currently on leave on that same time when a person is asking or your team member is asking uh, for a leave? You can take a conscious decision whether you want to approve that leave, whether you have proper planning done so that there is no loss of services to your clients. So based on that, now manager has a greater control of current leaves of that employee and do they want to approve the new leave for a new employee? So based on this absence planning dashboard, your managers can approve or reject or can take a conscious decision of approving or rejecting a leave. Providing formula level, formula execution status, statistics. This is again an absence thing and we have kept it as a low impact because this is mainly for the implementers or the admin team who is managing your system. In this process, what Oracle has done is when the system is executing past formulas for the absence related cases, then there will be some extra logs that would be provided, which will tell you which formula is migrated or which formula is getting called and how much time it has taken. So this is just extra logs that Oracle has incorporated into its output or log files for debugging purposes. Some of the processes are listed here that are evaluate absences, calculate accrual imbalances, update accrual plan enrollments, daily breakdown of absence details, and evaluate certification updates. So for all these processes, if we are checking the logs for any debugging purposes, we would be having a detailed log which will have more lines, which will tell us the type of formula that is run and how much time it has taken. So the statistics that can be used by the implementers or the admins. Again, as I've said, absence, a lot of enhancement is coming up. Oracle is putting a lot of efforts to streamline absences as per our requirements. So there is enhanced person selection for accrual processing. Oracle has now enhanced the person selection. What, what I mean by enhanced person selection is system is giving you more control of what all persons you want to process when you want to, when you want to run the accrual. Do you want to process future accruals automatically or no? all these updates are now provided so for example if there is a person in future and you are evaluating your absences for a year your uh, your enrollment plan is for a year you want to evaluate it so all the employees which are starting in future also will be evaluated going forward so this is the enhancement that oracle has done future employees will also be picked up when you are doing your accrual processing these are all the features which are delivered by oracle and you don't need to do anything it will be directly available to you for use now we are going to see some features where we need to opt in we need to enable those features for us so let's see all those types of errors which we want to do or we want to opt in to utilize that new feature 
The first is update existing absence entitlement records in payroll. Again, this feature, um, we should all be enabling it. It's a recommendation from our side that you should utilize this new feature and you should be using this. So what earlier used to happen is when we used to update any entitlement records for an employee for any absences, what used to happen is it used to delete the correct uh, the current absences and it used to recreate it automatically in the background. Because of it, what used to happen is there there used to be so many number of processes that were running in the background. Now what Oracle has done is it has minimized those deletion and updation. Now only those lines are getting impacted which we actually want to update. So this is actually updated or let's say the feature, the functionality has been much more improved. So it's a recommendation from all our side that you should enable this thing so that your processes run much more fine. Your retro payments are much easier to understand in the absence cases. There is another update payroll archive reports translation. So this is for those organizations which are uh, which are using Oracle reports not only in English, but they want French or Spanish or other languages that are available by Oracle. So if you want your payroll register, your payroll register report or your payment register report, if you want those informations also to be available as a translated reports, then you can enable this feature. And you can see now your reports not only in English, but other languages also. So you can use this feature if you want translated reports for yourself. Moving forward. In last release also or before that we are talking about or Oracle is talking about a lot of things about Redwood experiences. So Oracle is asking us to move towards the Redwood theme. So this is an announcement for the Redwood experience for the payslips. Oracle has provided us a new page for the payslips which looks much much more intuitive. You have various dashboards that are available. So you can go and see your dashboards. Uh, you can see how much you are paid and different types of uh, screen would be available. So if you are going with the Redwood experience, you need to enable this so that your pay slips can also be changed to Redwood. Theme. Another Redwood experience that has come up in global payroll section is payroll relationship page. Now the payroll relationship page is also converted to the Redwood theme and you can use this page now to see your payroll relationship. And if you will see this page is now much more simplified compared to other pages that Oracle were having and it has much more information in a single page that is available to you. So whenever you are using now Redwood toolkit, just deploy this uh, page also to see the new payroll relationship pages available. Again, these all things needs to be enabled to use it. So we have given you a profile option that needs to be enabled. If you enable this, your page will be updated. update in the absence space payroll interface update mode for transfer to pay. Earlier again, when we were transferring the absence information to the payroll interface, if we were sending all the lines that were available or any anything that is changing, if there is a change in the absence, we were sending each and every detail. We were deleting the correct complete entry and we were, we were recreating that complete entry again. So there were multiple lines that were going which were irrelevant because of that we were getting a lot many retro notifications which at the end nullifies itself so this announcement is again what we have talked earlier is an update to absence pages only the relevant lines in database are getting updated so that at the end as an end user we are not seeing all unnecessary transactions only limited transactions are available so this is again a feature that is available. If you want, you can enable this. Our recommendation is to enable these processes so that you saw a better functionality in absence space. In the absence space also, Oracle is introducing its Redwood experience pages. And now Oracle has given us a new page for existing absences. If you see a new redesigned Redwood page is available. We have given you a profile option which you can use to enable these pages and as soon as you enable it, a new Redwood page for the absence would be available to you.
Again, a very good arrangement that Oracle has come up with is regarding the absence balances. Oracle again has provided as a new Redwood page for balances. If you enable this balance page, you would see a new redesigned page for our experience. So just if you want to utilize it, enable this profile option and it would be readily available. If you see these all are classified as quick wins because it's just one simple option you need to enable and you will be able to use these features. These are again some of the images for the accrual pages, how accrual pages will look like, how compensation plan balances will look like, how donation plan balances will look like. So various uh, Redwood pages themes are available for your visibility, which you can enable. In the absence space, for the donations and for cash disbursement, Oracle has provided us new pages for the Redwood. So if you are using Redwood, enable these pages so that you can utilize this. Now coming to time and labor. So there are some uh, updates for the time and labor which Oracle has provided us. And if we want, we can utilize it. So this functionality is nothing new. It was already available when we were using OTL for the classic pages. There may be many people who would be who would have used uh, classic UI. So at that time also this function was available. And when we moved to responsive pages, this feature was available. But now in the new pages that Oracle is introducing, in those pages also, Oracle has got this time totals on enhanced. So if you are uh, entering any time, you would be seeing the total time that the time card is having. So those total times which were available in classic and responsive pages have been now introduced in the new OTL pages also. So it's enhanced time cards, though for all the enhanced time card pages, this feature is now cascaded to the new themes. Again, this is time and labor, worker creation of enhanced time cards. So if you are using new enhanced time cards, earlier in classic responsive pages, this feature was already available. So you can now add quick actions to you. And based on that quick actions, you can create your uh, new enhanced time cards and it will be much more appealing for the users. So now what Oracle is doing is, in the new pages that has been introduced, there were some limitations to this. Those new limitations, Oracle is now removing it based on the new releases. So for the coming releases also, Oracle has notified that there will be future changes coming to OTL pages and we will follow this up. Again, this is a quick way. Just if you are using your new um, OTL pages, you enable these features and it would be a good announcement for you. Okay, a time and labor uh, uh, announcement that Oracle has done. Up. It's set up of time and labor layout component and layout set. So what used to happen earlier is it's mainly for uh, the admin teams or the configurator who is uh, configuring your product. It's for them basically. So when you are implementing your OTL, there used to be a train, uh, a train guided system where you have to select multiple train stops to configure one item. Now what Oracle has done is they have simplified this train stop. They have minimized the train stops just by two or three train stops. You will be able to do the same transitions that you were doing earlier from five to six steps. So it is an enhancement that can be utilized if you are creating your new layout set or your new time entry layout components. Some of the examples are, if you now see there are only three stops that are available. Earlier there were many, many train stops available. You can see one, two and three stops are available here. But earlier you would be seeing more stops. So now what Oracle has done is in the fewer, in the fewer guided flow, they have incorporated much more tasks for us. So it, on a single page, you will be having more information to view and control. So that's a good announcement for configurators like implementers like us or the administrators who are maintaining your product. In the OTL space, we are seeing this web clock geological locations for quite a few times. Now what Oracle has done is if admin wants to see from where, from what location the time entry has been captured, they can easily monitor from which locations employee are entering their time cards. So the organizations which uh, which want to use this geological geolocation feature, so it will pinpoint 
the employee coordinates from where the employee is entering their time cards. So the administrators will have more control of how the time entries are done and from where the document is. So this is again a good feature. If you want to enable it, you can opt in and you can configure this feature. So I'm just taking a pause for a, for a second. If there's any questions, please ask. Okay. Now, coming to again, uh, time in labor. So as we have mentioned, Oracle is focusing more and providing more Redwood experience pages. So there is a new page that Oracle has provided us, which is existing time cuts. So if you want to use Redwood pages, you can enable this page and your OTL page will turn into a Redwood pages. Time card entry page also. Um, this is again a new Redwood page that Oracle has provided. If you want to enter any time cards, a new redesigned page is available for you. You can use this new page. Enable this. Enablement option is provided you directly in this presentation. Directly enable it and utilize your new uh, Redwood pages. Now we will talk about all those features. So we have already talked about um, the opt-ins that we need to do. There is not much configuration available and it's all a quick win. Now let's talk about some other features that are available or that have come up in this releases. Now this is uh, for the time entry. If you will see, this is not a quick win, but you need to do configurations. You need to enable this feature and the impact level is high. So these are for those organizations which has time spending midnight. On the new Redwood pages or the enhanced pages, now the individuals and the managers can enter time which crosses midnight. So if you have uh, time entries or you have employees who works midnight and their time crosses, you can now use this error messages. Also, you can control if you have one employee that cannot work in midnight, you can provide an error message also. Like the currently, there is an error message that is available that you can't enter your time in this space or in this time. So it gives much more flexibility to the payroll admins and the managers, and it's remove some of the common mistakes that employees do. So it makes the time entry more genuine and easy to reconcile. Again, this feature was already available in classic and responsive pages. It has been extended to the new pages. Again, coming to the OTL. This is related to the project cost validations. So Oracle has enhanced the cost validations from the project side. If you are updating your time card, then from release 22, me, Oracle has started this process that if the time card is updated, then it would revalidate that the project costing that was available at that time is it still valid or not this is enhanced now there were some limitations at that time it is now enhanced and it's becoming much more robust so you can use this project costing validation uh, feature that is available on the time card you have to enable this feature it's not a quick win it will take some time because it's a testing you have to do so you can use this feature if you are using project costing in your project. Now coming to some OTBI enhancements that are introduced by Oracle. So there are a few reports or a few subject areas that Oracle has enhanced and it has given you some more fields that you can utilize in your current or new reports that you are about to create and that you want to create. In the group, in the global payroll space, if you will see a lot of new features or new um, attributes are available, like job set, job code, job ID, position code, position ID, department ID, period type, period types. There is an attribute element link name that is renamed as element eligibility name. This is done as a part of Oracle standardization terms that they want to use. So these all things have been changed in the costing subject area, payroll costing subject area. So if you want to use position IDs, job IDs, department IDs, or any of these fields, now they are available. Your subject area has gotten more fields. 
So if you want, you can update those things. Moving forward. Now, Oracle is giving you options in your subject area to use actual dimensions name in payroll balances. So if there is a user dimension that you have created, then earlier the base dimension name was uh, getting populated in your reports. But now with this new attribute that is available, you can use the dimension name that you have created or the dimension name that is used by the legislation. So the specific, so it will just uh, enhance your uh, viewing experience for the payroll balance reports. Again, you don't need to enable this or you don't need to configure this, but anytime if you are using your uh, OTBS subject area, these features will be available to you. One security announcement that Oracle has done in the time and labor uh, change request uh, real-time workforce area is now based on your security that you have caught, only those employees you would be able to use. So now based on this new update, you are more data compliant. The security has improved a lot in OTBI space also. So this feature is again ready to use. Um, now with the subject area, you will be only able to use or see those results that you are eligible to see. You are only able to see those employees which you are able to see as per your security provided by your enemy. Now coming to some of the health and safety uh, module, what are the things that are uh, available in health and safety? Now, if there was a common requirement that whenever there's a health and safety issue, a, multi a notification should be given to multiple email ID at once. So for example, if there's a target completion days, so if there's an incident and there's a target completion date, we want to automatically send some notifications or reminders or maybe can kind of an escalations to the reviewers or the approvers. So those have been now incorporated. Now you can provide relevant alerts to your target audience, to your approvers, to your reviewers in real time. So this is a, a good enhancement that has been done and you can utilize this uh, subject area to send email notifications also. Again, health and safety issue, related incidents of an incidents. What this has done is, now, in this subject area, there are multiple new attributes that are available. So it has included now summary of the incident. What is the summary? When is the incident date and time? When was the incident date and time recorded? Incident number, incident owner. All these new fields are also available in your OTBI reports. So if you want to enhance or you're using the subject area, then you can use it to enhance your OTBI reporting. Now we'll talk about some replaced or removed features that are happening in this releases. It's very important that we keep a track of all the things that Oracle is now downgrading. It's saying it's no longer available or it's replacing so that in a time bounded manner, we can take actions to use the new features or the enhanced features. So from a long time, starting from 22D, Oracle has advised us to not use run payroll costing reports, run payroll activity reports, run schedule deduction report, run payroll register report. In, instead of this, Oracle has provided us reports. If you will see at the end, there is for the latest process. So all these above reports have been enhanced and the new faster versions are available. So Oracle is recommending that you start using this feature because very soon these all features will be replaced. So start using this new reports. Run payroll activity report for the latest process, run statutory deduction report for the latest process, payroll register report for the latest process. Start using these reports. These reports are much lighter and they are very fast to run as compared to the older reports. The output will be same, but it's just the time and how quickly those reports can run. So if you are an organization with a heavy count of employees, so these reports, you will actually see a good amount of time saving that you are having and the reports will be running much quicker now. Now, this is uh, the same feature what we have talked about earlier is, in the time card earlier, what used to happen is, when we used to create 
a time attributes then we used to run one program so that it takes the impact now what oracle has done is it said uh, you don't need to run that program automatically we are going to do this as a part of our uh, upgrade process you don't need to do anything you just create your time entry layout components and automatically whatever program needs to be run we will automatically run it so the business benefit impact is if you are an admin you don't have to worry about this extra task that you have to do always now just by creating one process you are expecting that it should work directly and now it will be working as per your expectation you don't have to run any separate processes to enable this uh, change that you have done so again, this will save some time for you. Now, uh, uh, we have covered all the new features that Oracle is taking up, and we have suggested you some of those absence features that you should all enable it because that's going to improve your absence solution. Now, I'm uh, passing this uh, uh, podium to Hardik to continue forward. And if you have any questions, um, you can put it in chat. Thank you, Atul, for the wonderful insights. Um, so we are at the Q and A. Let's check with Vidya if she is uh, if she has something to speak, or she has replied over the text. Vidya, please, if you can reconfirm. Um, hi, Hardik. Yes, uh, there was a, there was one question um, where it was asked: Is the absence planning view a new form for all, or is it only available if enabled? And I've answered that mentioning that it's not a redwood view and it's available for all line managers we don't need to do anything to enable this particular feature in 23c so i don't see any other questions no worries so thank you so much so before uh, you all leave us we'd like to uh, keep you informed that we have some sessions upcoming tomorrow we have benefits and compensation then again next week finance supply chain talent management hr help desk and orc supply chain inventory order management procurement so please do pass message your colleagues and anyone uh, facing any issues with registration please pass the message to the support manager um or write to us which is ces service operations cs operations the email is cs operations at uh, mastech.com and we'll be also happy to help and all you can you can certainly reach out to the respective support manager and we'll connect you if you're stuck anywhere if you need any additional information services please reach out and just to also um, keep you informed that we'll be sending you a presentation pdf along with the recording of this session in next three to four days time which will be available to you at a single click from your email and you'll also have the test scripts uh, for you to test the features um, which will be available um, from that email link itself and just before you uh, all go just uh, would would like to have your feedback on uh, um, please rate the overall experience in today's session one being lowest five being highest please thank you for your feedbacks that will help us improving moving forward so once again we would like to thank you everybody and uh, we'll be closing the poll in a second now Thank you once again. I'll be closing the poll and uh, thank you again for your valuable time today towards this session. Thank you.